We are very, very As yesterday, all I did was talk about Tesla. I think today, what I'm gonna do is do a bit of an EV news roundup because quite a few things and announcements have come out recently. Let's talk about them after the party. Should we just let him sleep then? He's out like a light. Cool, we'll go to the party. Jasper can sleep. Are you awake? Didn't you come in, Jasper? A bit, bit more awake now. Right, I've just nipped out quickly to do the first couple of items on my EV news roundup. The first news item I'm going to bring to everyone's attention is the i3 from BMW. Apparently, the new bigger battery version is outselling the range extender, which is the reverse of what was happening before. This doesn't particularly surprise me because the battery version is basically a better vehicle, quicker accelerating, more range from the same size battery, and cheaper, of course. Where it's always fallen down in the past is it just didn't have enough range. And whilst that is still sort of true, it's definitely got a lot better. And as a city car, it is pretty spot on. Small, accelerates very quickly, nimble. Fisker, and do they even still exist? Anyway, what's left of Fisker that does still exist is saying that they're going to have a 400 mile range EV soon. They reckon they're going to unveil it next year. What, does that mean that we're going to get it next year or that people will be able to drive it next year or that it will be in production in two years after that? I mean, I don't know. I think Fisker is one of these brands where I'm going to need to see a car on a showroom floor before I'm really going to believe they exist as a car manufacturer. A large part of the reason why Tesla is so keen to get their new self-driving hardware onto cars is because they can use that hardware to train the software. So if it's in lots and lots of vehicles, I've said this a number of times in other videos, it's, it's one of their key advantages is by getting the hardware out there and collecting the information on how people drive, where the software is deficient. So basically they can sort of have the software shadow driving where the human driver significantly deviates from what the software would do and the outcome is successful and there isn't a crash. They can analyze, well, what did the software think it was going to do that was wrong and why. By training their software using this enormous data set, they should be able to make really, really fast progress, which would be awesome because it won't be very long before there'll be lots and lots of cars out there that are capable of driving themselves from A to B. Tesla can use that information to basically inform the regulatory bodies and get approval for the cars being fully autonomous. And that's actually quite easy to do, I think. You know, once you can prove that these vehicles are substantially safer, there's no reason not to trust it. Especially as computers being computers, there is a significant chance that the self-driving cars are gonna be substantially better than human drivers. Faraday Future have announced that they are going to be unveiling their new 300 mile range consumer electric vehicle at the CES show in January. Again, as with all these sort of quote unquote vaporware products, I'm gonna believe it when I see it. Apparently the Mercedes CEO has stated that he sees the future of the Mercedes brand as being the leading EV manufacturer in the premium vehicle segment within 10 years. Maybe. But at the same time, I'm pretty sure Audi and certainly Tesla are gonna have something to say about this prediction. So who can say what's gonna happen in 10 years time? The Nissan Group, well, Nissan Renault Alliance, has bought a 34% stake in Mitsubishi Motors, which is in fact a controlling stake, which means that Carlos Ghosn has now added a third auto manufacturer to his impressive looking stable of auto manufacturers. I mean, seriously, most people don't have three cars to their name. He's got three auto manufacturers. Wow. And briefly going back to Tesla for half a second, Elon Musk has said that there will be a part three reveal for the Model 3 car. 
I mean, wow, talk about milking it. I think this is crazy. I, but then I totally understand they have a huge number of orders to fill, which means they have to spend a huge amount of money building the production capacity to fulfill those orders in a sensible amount of time, which means that they have to keep the stock high. They have to keep investors and banks on-side, engaged and enthusiastic about Tesla Motors and its future which means they need a lot of publicity, preferably for free. And good news for all you Irish wannabe Tesla owners, Tesla Motors are going to open their first store in Ireland in Dublin. And hopefully they will open a supercharger or two as well. Tesla have ranked number one in overall brand experience out of automakers. This is being compiled by a New York-based consultancy group. I'm actually going to be doing a Tesla ownership review, hopefully some point over the next week, because I have got something to say about Tesla ownership. Spoiler alert, I'm going back to the party. Mm -hmm. One thing's plainly obvious, the next few years in the EV world are gonna be fantastically exciting. It was extremely good fun. I ate my own body weight in, in cake. Glasper weighs at least two kilos more. Mummy was very restrained. Not really. Yeah, actually, good point. None of us were restrained. It was like a cake party. I'm not really complaining, honestly. <laughs> hey, so I've got a few questions for you from one of my subscribers. I think I'll probably do them in reverse order. How many questions? Three. Uh -huh. So the first question is, when you get home from work, do I have dinner ready for you? <laughs> I made you pancakes a few times. Yeah, what happened to that? You bought me a blender for our <laughs> for my first birthday after we got together. I thought you liked making me pancakes. No, I learnt my lesson. <laughs> I noticed you haven't bought me any kitchen utensils since then. No. The next question is, do you like driving the Tesla Model X? <laughs> <laughs> Tesla Model S, I mean. In fairness, uh, I've barely driven your car though, have I? Yeah, the time you drove it, you mounted the curb and screwed up my wheels. Yes. The third and final question, in reverse order, is what do you think of my vlogging? Yeah, I think it's brilliant. I think you've always had a lot to say. You're creative. I think you can be funny when you're not too tired. Yeah, the humour comes and goes, doesn't it? <laughs> I think it's brilliant. I, I really hope that you manage to make a success of it. And there is an extra question that has come from a... Bonus uh, question? Yeah, there's, there's a bonus question from somebody else. Somebody has suggested that you do a daily vlog, that you do one of the daily vlogs. They asked if I'd let you, which <laughs> the answer is absolutely. Knock yourself out. Okay, that's fantastic. And there is going to be one bonus little bit of EV news as well for today. Nottingham has announced that as part of a £40 million funding plan thing from the government, that they're going to be introducing a EV stroke bus lane through the city. Yeah, absolutely, an EV lane, it's a fantastic idea. It ties in quite handily with what I was going to talk about tomorrow, which is EV incentives. So, on that note, I hope you've enjoyed today's blog post. If you have, remember to like it and share it and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you tomorrow for the next instalment of my daily vlog. Bye. Why is it always us? I don't know. It's because I'm um, filming. It's you, babe, not me. Yeah, you're right. It is me. Well, it used to be you. Now it's me. Well, huh? Swings and roundabouts. It used to be me. It certainly did.